morning, everybody. My name is Katie O'Neill, and I'm the Marketing Manager at the UCD College of Engineering and Architecture. You're very welcome to our webinar today, which is going to cover a number of our master's programs in the School of Biosystems and Food Engineering. Today, we are joined by the head of school, Professor Colm O'Donnell, and one of our recent graduates, Porik Keating, who will share his experiences with you. So now I'd like to introduce you to our head of school, Professor Colm O'Donnell. Thank you, Katie. Uh, good morning, everyone. So over the next few minutes, I'd like to give you a high level overview of the taught graduate programs in our school. So my name, as Katie says, is Colm O'Donnell. I'm head of the UCD School of Biosystems and Food Engineering. We're one of six schools in the UCD College of Engineering and Architecture. So over the last decade or so, we've developed uh, a suite of taught graduate programs um, focused in the domain of in the environment, sustainability, and agriculture and food engineering. So I'd like to give you an overview of these programs, um, the course content uh, covered in the programs, the career opportunities for graduates of these programs, and then we'll finish up the webinar by having um, uh, one of our graduates, uh, um, Pori Keating, uh, who's a uh, wastewater engineer, um, and he will tell you about his experience in studying uh, the program in environmental technology. So the first program I'd like to give you a high level overview of is our biosystems and food engineering program. Now, this is either a one-year or a two-year program for graduates who have uh, a relevant engineering or um, degree in, 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 in a related area and who've completed a four-year program, they can complete this program in one year. However, graduates of three-year programs uh, require two years to complete this master's program. So this program is geared at graduates who wish to prefer pursue a professional engineering career um, in the, the biosystems or food engineering area. Uh, typical employers would be the large agri-food companies like Diageo or Nestle or, 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 or similar companies. So the program includes an internship uh, of a six month period where a graduate would get experience um, with a relevant uh, company in this domain. And this year, all our graduates who completed internships um, obtained employment uh, with that employer. So it's a great way to, to um, get experience in an area that you like and, and, and um, to, to get a career in, in, in an area aligned to your skills. So the program then uh, covers modules relevant to food processing, uh, process engineering, and they are applied to the to food manufacture, but also looking at environmental and energy aspects. Um, so in terms of uh, waste valorization, uh, older measurement, um, sustainable energy, what are the options to get energy from um, bioenergy applications? How can you lower your carbon footprint? Um, what is the life cycle assessment? So in terms of new product development and process enhancements. The, the, and really it meets the needs of employers who have to develop uh, and process products uh, with enhanced safety and quality, but with reduced impact uh, on the environment, reduced carbon footprints, reduced energy use, and areas such as packaging, which again, the emphasis move away from, from towards more sustainable food packaging solutions. Um, the, as I said, this is a professional engineering program, so it's a strong emphasis on design. And as part of the program, then there would be uh, a 30 credit um, project uh, that the students carried out on an aspect of the course that could be uh, design of a, a food plant, for example, that would take into account the process, the, the raw materials, the energy use, etc. So again, if you, need, if you would like to see more details on this program, uh, we, you would see them online through the online brochures. 
or you, you're more than welcome to contact the school office and we can put you in touch with, with previous graduates. So in terms of opportunities for graduates, we've done a survey, so further study for PhDs, so some students work in that area. Most work with bioprocess and food companies. Uh, some work in the environmental protection, uh, companies like the Environmental Protection Agency, and also uh, sustainable energy and green technology companies. So just to recap then, this is a, a two-year program for three-year graduates. If you have a four-year program, you, you may complete the year uh, in, in, in 12 calendar months. So the next program then I'd like to talk about is our Masters in Food Engineering. Now this is a 12 month graduate program. Um, and it's really aimed at engineering, science and technology graduates um, who wish to develop their scientific and technical knowledge in, in food process engineering and food manufacture. So, this program is delivered over a 12 month calendar period. There are two trimesters of uh, fundamental modules on food processing, food process automation, risk assessment, uh, food sensors, sustainability, etc. And then that's followed by one trimester, then where the students carry out a project on a specific aspect. So that could be development of a system to detect adulteration of food products, for example, or looking at optimization of a milk powder manufacturing plant. Uh, this program, uh, I think this, this year we had approximately 24 graduates on the program, and job opportunities are strong with a growing agri-food industry. Typical employers would be companies like the large dairy companies like Ornua or Dairy Gold, um, so, um, again, a wide range of opportunities. Some students um, avail of opportunities to do PhD programs in the school um, after the program. So we are a very research intensive school and we have approximately uh, 60 uh, full-time research students in the school. And this program provides a good foundation in, in food engineering whether you use it for an immediate career in industry or whether you wish to pursue further PhD studies for which we have a wide range of scholarships. So again, to recap, 12 month program uh, delivered by a research intensive faculty and um, excellent uh, career opportunities. So the third program I'd like to talk about today is, again, it's a one year program. Um, it's delivered over a 12 month period, September to August. And this program then is for graduates of science or engineering disciplines uh, who wish to pursue a career in the whole area of energy and um, green technologies and the related sustainability area. Um, again, modules are covered in two trimesters, followed by a trimester then working on, on a project. So in terms of the subjects that would be covered, uh, subjects like bioenergy, uh, life cycle assessment, uh, energy systems, bioeconomy. So a, a wide range of technical modules, uh, which develop basic technical competencies in this area. And then those companies, competencies then are uh, utilized then to complete a, a three-month project at the end. This can be carried out in partnership with industry. And uh, again, it's a good opportunity if you wish to work in a particular sector that you carry out a project specifically in the area that you're interested in, in partnership with the company, and it can open up excellent uh, career opportunities. Just in terms of where the graduates obtain employment, we've, we've done the survey. So typically, uh, typical employers uh, include energy consultancies, um, energy generation companies, um, environmental protection agency, um, large multinationals who uh, are, are looking at graduates who can manage the energy requirements of their facilities, minimize carbon footprints. 
and, and look at alternative and more sustainable ways of generating uh, energy. So the final program that I'd like to talk about is environmental technology. Uh, again, this is a one year program and we're fortunate to have a, a graduate of this program uh, who will give you his perspective on the program uh, just after I give you a high level overview. Um, so this program then is led by our um, faculty member, Professor Tom Curran. Uh, so Tom has specialized in areas of older management and, and uh, regeneration of, of, of bioeconomy opportunities. Uh, graduates of this program, just looking at the database of, of, of her graduates work, um, energy consultancies, engineering consultancies, environmental regulation, uh, public service and, and research, and also with industry. Uh, compliance by industry uh, with environmental discharge licenses. This is an increasingly growing field in industry and graduates with the requisite skill set are required to meet the demanding challenges of meeting those requirements. So again, the program is, is delivered in two trimesters of lectures followed by a project in an area of your choice. That project title then is agreed with your supervisor and there is flexibility so you can carry out a project in a specific area that you'd like to work in uh, when you finish the program. Again, opportunities to work with industry, uh, whether that would be solving an environmental problem with industry. For example, it could be looking at um, what are the, 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 the water and waste treatment options um, for a particular, say, large dairy company and evaluate those options both from a technical and an economic perspective and come up with solutions and recommendations then to minimize the impact of different industries on the environment. Again, you will find full details of this program uh, on our website and on the UCD graduate uh, taught programs website. Um, so this program has been running uh, for over 10 years and has um, the course has evolved over that period and, and um, presently we've uh, a set of 60 credits of taught modules uh, in key areas to address the development of and the acquisition of key technical competencies related to environmental protection, whether that's environmental protection of, regarding air pollution, ground pollution, water pollution, uh, etc. So again, that was a whistle stop tour through our four programs. Um, further information uh, is available uh, on, on the UCD website in the taught graduate program section. Um, and again, these taught graduate programs uh, most of them are designed for, for, for engineers or scientists uh, in a relevant technical area to complete the program in the one year period. And our professional engineering program then is designed for engineering graduates. Uh, and depending on whether they have a three year or a four year program can complete the taught masters in one or two years. So um, at this stage, I'd like to ha uh, hand over the webinar to, to Porik Keating. Porik is a graduate of our environmental technology program in 2018 and is now a, a wastewater engineer with Enva. So Porik. Thank you very much, Professor Colum. Um, so I suppose I'll just kind of start as to where I came from before I started the masters. I would have done agricultural and environmental science in UCD prior to picking this master's. Um, and then when I finished up my degree, I was kind of looking for a more in-depth knowledge to the environmental and environmental technologies side of things, because I would have more so focused on the agriculture throughout my four years in my degree. So when I was researching for the master's, um, I was looking kind of Cork, Galway, Dublin, um, and when I found the online brochure for the Environmental Technologies Masters, it kind of drew me in straight away. It ticked a lot of boxes for me. It had kind of focused on water, soil, air pollution, air emission modeling. So that was kind of ticked all my boxes for me. So the 
teaching i found it was very kind of almost personalized one-to-one you weren't put under too much pressure the work was left up to you but the class sizes were kept quite small so you would have gotten to know all the lecturers and professors kind of on a first name basis within the first few weeks they also do um a very good kind of get together the first week or two in each semester where they have maybe tea or coffee or sandwiches or pizza so you kind of get to know everybody there's a good mix of students from all over ireland all over the world so you get a very good mix of everybody in the first few weeks when you um start up in ucd so even if you are going up and you don't know anybody you kind of i'd say in the first two weeks you kind of start making um connections with people through the very small class sizes and the um lunch meeting that usually happens around the first week or two um so the thesis as colin touched on there the options for that kind of came out around halloween time and then you have kind of up until christmas to pick one of the titles or if you feel you want to do your own kind of thesis title you can then go forward to your master's supervisor and suggest a new master's or, or a new thesis title and that will be agreed around christmas time and then after christmas then you can kind of start doing your literature review for your thesis or you can start doing maybe some lab work um i did kind of one on ammonia emissions um from poultry and pig units so i kind of started after christmas but then you have a third semester then in the summer to finish it off and kind of do your own work your own time so that's kind of a very intense summer of finishing off your thesis but it's very worthwhile when you get it done and you get it finished and you get it over the line um i suppose outside of the thesis there is a good workload balance of kind of 50 percent would be continuous assessment 50 percent would be final exams so if you do spread your workload out over the few weeks you'll you'll be well you'll be well able to go for a few drinks um on a thursday night or whatever you're whatever you're feeling but it, it would catch up on you to be honest if you, if you don't keep on top of it it does catch up on you and then you are trying to study for your final exam and you are trying to finish off some of the final um final final um projects so that would be my one major bit of advice because it happened to me in my degree that you kind of let things build up but it definitely throughout the masters it does make a massive difference if you keep on top do a bit week by week and then toward the end you have more free time to then study for your final exams so just in terms of some of the things you'll be studying and some of the modules you'll be doing and some of the stuff that's kind of stuck with me and has very much so related to what I'm doing at the moment. Um, there would be um, one of the modules you kind of focus on air emissions and dispersion modeling of air emissions. So that's very handy for what I'm doing at the moment. And then also another one, there was um, all formulas and um, a module on chemical loading of waterways and chemical loading come out of wastewater treatment plants and into wastewater treatment plants. And basically all your FM ratios and your COD and BOD and all that kind of stuff basically to make sure that the treatment plants are operating at um, full potential. Um, you also do life cycle assessments. So this could be, for example, on a wind turbine farm. So you get all the raw material, all the transport, and you draw everything in together. And then you basically build a wind turbine farm on a software package that um, is set up on your laptop for you as part of the masters. And included in this, then you would kind of get a payback on the wind turbine farm. So it could be, let's say, 20 or 30 years before you get all the money back from your wind turbine farm by selling the energy to the grid. It is a very tough, tough module, but it's very, very interesting. And once you kind of keep on top of it week on week, you'll find it very interesting in terms of the raw materials um, that go into building a wind turbine farm, which I found very interesting. Quite a lot of stuff goes into it. Um, also, you do um, you do a module on kind of the 
let's say the energy savings that can be made on a building. You take any building you want and you look at how the energy is used in the building, what amount of energy is used in the building and how you could, for example, reduce the energy costs in that building and make it a more energy efficient building. Um, so there's every, you learn everything from air immersion, air emissions modeling to chemical loading of waterways to how long a landfill will last for and how to like line landfill and how much waste the landfill can take and how much money a landfill will generate. So I found like there was a very broad range of everything from air to water to soil and it, the master's touches on each one of these areas. So I found that very interesting. And as I said, I decided to go down the water route of things and definitely a good few of the modules have stood to me. Now you never stop learning. There's all this stuff to be learned, but it definitely did uh, advance me ahead of other candidates for my current position with having the masters. So I would definitely be recommending if you are thinking of doing it, it's only a year. And it will definitely benefit you when you go out to look for future careers um, going forward. Um, also, there's quite an overlap with the other masters that Professor Colum touched on, especially the masters in sustainable and green technologies. There's quite an overlap between that masters and the environmental technology masters. So if you're thinking between two of these masters, I would maybe look for more advice because they are quite similar in their, in their modules and depending on what you're looking to do once you graduate, um, one might suit you more than the other. Um, so yeah, I recommend just looking at the online brochure that was very helpful for me. And I did um, make contact with um, Professor Tom Kern before I chose my master's and I found him to be very helpful. He directed me in terms of what, um, what modules would be covered and um, how it, how the, basically the masters would be run. Um, so yeah, I suppose that's pretty much everything I have to say. It's um, very one-to-one -one kind of masters. You get to know all your lecturers, you get to know the, your peers, you get to know everyone kind of very soon within the masters. And um, yeah, I suppose if you have a major decision now, just don't be afraid to ask for help off anyone within UCD because that's what I did and I found them very helpful. And obviously I chose to do the environmental technology masters and I definitely recommend it to anyone that's thinking of doing it. Thanks, Porg. That was really interesting. I think it's fair to say that the masters seem to prepare you quite well for your future career from what you were saying about the modules. We have a couple of questions here someone's actually just wondering what bachelor's did you study before you took on the master's in environmental technology i um did so i first went into ucd and i did agricultural science i decided to focus on the agricultural environmental science so then i initially wanted to do animal and crop production but then i got more of an interest in the environment so let's say when I finished up the bachelor's degree in agricultural environmental science, I just kind of felt as if I wanted more knowledge and more in-depth knowledge of the environment. I kind of felt like moving away from the agricultural side of things and into the purely environmental side of things. So that's why I decided to further myself with the master's and that's why I chose the environmental technology master's. So I should just say I did the agricultural environmental science in UCD as well, actually. Okay, and someone's also, I know you touched upon the dissertation that you were doing. Someone wants to know, was that a pre-assigned dissertation or was that a topic that you had an interest in and that you, you asked, could you do your dissertation in? It was a pre-assigned one, but you do have the option to pick your own one within reason. So let's say it, as I said, it was around October, I think, when the big list of options is put up. And it's, um, you just kind of choose which one you'd like. You choose in order of one, two, and three. And there's also a section if you wanted to make up another, but you would kind of consult with your master's supervisor and see if this is possible because it might not always be possible. 
So we did my one on the emissions of ammonia from pig and poultry farms and basically did um, on naturally protected, that's kind of natural areas of heritage and all that kind of the uh, concentrations of ammonia on those sites. So I didn't initially pick that off my own back. That was one of the pre-assigned um, thesis titles, but it was, I'm very happy I did it because there was lots of, lots of um, kind of on your own work. So it was, I was given direction of course, and helped out a lot by um, Tom Kern and Dahi O'Kellon, but it um, meant a lot of kind of your own work. So there is quite a bit of work involved in the thesis and it is, a lot of it is left up to you, but I think you kind of, if you're doing a master's, you kind of need to be prepared to do work on your own, but there is guidance and advice there when needed. Okay, um, very good to know, thank you. Colm, this question's for you. Someone's wondering about the biosystems and food engineering, that's the ME. Is the internship in addition to the one-year program if you have a four-year degree? And is the internship placement guaranteed with this program? Um, so on the biosystems and food engineering program, the, the, the internship is a mandatory part of the program uh, for engineering graduates uh, who commence with a three-year program. Um, so the, the internship then would be organized, the, our college are fortunate to have an internship manager, an internship office that facilitates that internship. Um, for, for graduates who complete the program uh, on a 12 month period, uh, no internship is involved in, in that 12 month program. So really um, the two year program has a, a, an internship, the one year program does not, that's the main difference. Thanks Colm. Um, someone, I think this probably be for you as well Colm. Someone's asking how do you ensure that the program is kept relevant to future employers. And I guess that's by the modules that they're studying, but I guess they're wondering how you know what's preparing them for a future career in that area. Um, I suppose a key part of, of, of all the programs is that we utilize guest lecturers where appropriate, say from industry or, or from companies. Um, so in terms of the relevance of the, of the information that's presented, that's timely. Um, the, the faculty who teach the program um, are all research active in the space. So they're leading practitioners in, in, in the field. So in terms of trends, new technologies, that's their core, um, that's their core business. So that's, they, they are leading experts. And in, in fact, maybe a third of our faculty would be ranked in the top 1% of researchers globally. So in terms of staff expertise and competencies, we're fortunate to have a very good team who feed into the program. And, and again, the, the modules, they evolve continuously, uh, taking into account the, the latest uh, industry trends and feedback. Um, and I suppose the projects where students work, quite often they get an opportunity to embed themselves in a research group in UCD, comprising PhD students and postdocs. So they really get good exposure uh, to, to the latest state of the art in that field. Excellent. I think that probably answers the next question we had where someone was, was mentioning that this school particularly seems to be very research intensive and how does that benefit and feed into the teaching of the students when studying a master's? Yeah, I suppose the, the clearest way, Katie, that that feeds into the programme really is in the supervision of the project and, and the selection of the project because students get an opportunity to work on an aspect of the research program of that faculty and, and, and the associated research team. So in terms of access to state-of-the-art equipment, um, uh, access to, to a group who can train students on using uh, new um, technical approaches, whether it's new software or new methodologies, and, and an opportunity, I know some students, they, they, they were carrying out a project, but it was a lot of uh, field or case studies. So an opportunity to go around to factories, collect samples, uh, analyze the samples, draw up reports. So that exposure uh, to an advanced training in the area uh, really pays dividends in terms of uh, the future career of graduates of these programs. Thanks, Colin. 
I think the final question is probably uh, directed to Pork. Someone wondering, in terms of when you were completing your masters, um, how did you find how did you find your role? Were there any career supports? And I suppose how easy was it to get a job? Is what they're wondering. Um, well, in terms of career supports, I'll I'll be honest. I because I knew where I was going. I, I had a job secured almost before I finished the masters. I never really looked for career advice, but I'm assuming there is there is that facility there. I don't know. Maybe you might be better placed to answer that. But I had. Um, let's say, employment secured as I was finishing up the Masters. Um, but um, there is plenty of employment out there because from what I've seen in the areas I'm working in, a lot of um, licenses are tightening up on facilities from pharma to food processing to um, air emissions, water, water, um, you know, it's all tightening up. So, in terms of from the environmental like regulations, um, there's definitely definitely future employment going to be strong in that. I know with the whole coronavirus things are affected, but I think climate change is going to keep on happening. And I think with from what I've seen, all licenses been tightening up. I'd imagine there'll be a fairly steady demand on employment going forward in the area of basically anything to do with environmental or making things more energy efficient. Um, I don't know, does that really answer the question? I suppose the answer is one part, but not the part on the career advice. Um, no, I think, that's, I think that's interesting to know. And I think it's a it, wonderful position to be in to have a job secured before you have completed your master's. Just to answer on the career supports um, to that person, we do have a career support centre we actually have a dedicated person just for our college, Nicola Fortune, um, and students can avail of that support system if, uh, unlike Pork, they don't have a job uh, secured before they finish their master's. I also think, and maybe Colin might want to come in, I think the fact that the school is active at bringing uh, professionals and uh, you know working in the industry in to do guest lectures also gives students exposure to potential future employers um, and getting that level of familiarity. Would that be true, Colin? Absolutely. I mean, I think that the opportunity to network with, with, with past graduates um, or with, with, with other leading experts in the field um, and the career insights you get, um, that really can enhance the career opportunities. I should say that as also as part of, of, of our taught master's programs, we offer um, a module where mock interviews are um, are embedded in the program and um, so the, 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 the interview panel will be made up of UCD faculty and industry experts and, and that tailored individual feedback uh, to, to students on our programs, they find that invaluable in terms of the career preparation, review of CVs uh, and an actual formal mock interview with feedback that, that really uh, assist the graduates and, and students on the program in, in, in being successful in their future careers. I think that's, that's a great opportunity for students. So I think that that concludes all of our questions for today. Um, all that's left is for me to thank Professor Colm O'Donnell, Head of School of Biosystems and Food Engineering here at UCD, and our 2018 graduate, uh, Pork. Thank you very much for your time today. I think the insights you've given future students has been invaluable and it's very much appreciated. So thank you all and goodbye.